How y'all doing? Um, so I'm going to start us off with some doom and gloom to really set the mood. I promise I am going to try to end on a happy note, though. So it turns out we are in the midst of a six mass extinction. Species are dying out at a pace of about a thousand times that of the background rate. We are also having species that are losing numbers uh, at a devastating rate as well. And it turns out that these extinctions and decrease in numbers is entirely human caused. Depending on the species, a variety of reasons come into play. These reasons typically fall into one or a combination of the six known by the acronym HIPCO. They stand for habitat destruction and fragmentation, invasive species, population growth, pollution, climate change, and the over-harvesting of species. Um, of these, habitat loss is the greatest reason and is going to be the primary focus of my talk, though we are going to talk about invasive species as well. As our human population continues to grow, our urban and suburban areas are going to continue to grow as well, as is our need for more natural land to be converted to farmland to feed this growing human population. Because of this, areas that are considered wilderness, where humans' impact is non-existent, are going to continue to shrink in size. The environmentalist, Michael Rosenzweig, realized that if species are to have a chance on this earth, it is not going to be through the areas of wilderness or nature preserves, but through humans learning to share the part of the earth that we use with nature. And he called this idea ecological reconciliation. Examples of this are green rooftops, where the land that has been disturbed is now just located six floors higher. Or the green wall near Hammond's cafeteria that is used by birds and insects and lizards. It could even be on farmland, keeping areas that are intact and natural like forests. Problem is, is most of us do not own buildings or farms, but an area where you can make a difference is your house, more specifically your yard. Kind of the think globally but act locally idea. A good start is putting in a pollinator garden, more specifically a pollinator garden with native plant species. Uh, this is important because native plant species have co-evolved with native insects over millions of years. And these native insects are an important part of the biodiversity of your area. They play an important cog in the food chain, and they pollinate many of our food crops. A couple of examples of this importance. Our native oak trees host caterpillars of over 530 different species of butterfly and moth. The Asian ginkgo tree hosts just five species of caterpillar. This is important because most terrestrial birds, their chicks are fed a diet of 90 to 95% of insects. So a decrease in insects like the caterpillar means less food for baby birds which means less baby birds, which means less birds overall. Another example of this is the Gulf fritterly butterfly that has formed an exclusive uh, um, relationship with a native plant. It lays its eggs exclusively on passion flower. And its caterpillars feed primarily on passion flower as well. Another example of a relationship like this is the monarch butterfly whose numbers have decreased about 90% in the past decade or so. Monarch butterflies will lay their eggs exclusively on milkweed, and their caterpillars feed on milkweed primarily as well. The decrease in monarch butterflies has been linked to a decrease in milkweed habitat. Both milkweed and passionflower are native plant species. Native plants also attract bees, another insect that has seen a decrease in numbers recently. In fact, the first bee was added to the endangered species list about a month ago, 
the rusty patched bumblebee. Bees are important because they pollinate many of our food crops. A variety of plants provide a variety of food for insects, but also for other animals as well. Things like goldenrod, trumpet creeper, and coral honeysuckle provide nectar for insects and birds. Trees like oak and hickory provide nuts for birds, squirrels, raccoons, and deer. Shrubs like buttonbush and hearts of bustin provide seeds. Beautyberry and wild grape provide fruits and berries. A bird's diet can also be supplemented by bird feeders, but again, variety is the key. Different types of bird feeders will attract different types of birds. A typical bird feeder with bird seed brings in songbirds, but a suet feeder shown on the right attracts your woodpeckers. Nectar feeders bring in your hummingbirds. Again, bird feeders are a supplemental form of food. They should not, not be the main source of food for birds. Equally important to planting native plant species is the removal of invasive species. English ivy grows along the ground and can choke out native plant species like heartleaf and spotted wintergreen. I seem to be in a constant and never-ending battle removing English ivy from my yard, but the areas where I have removed it, spotted wintergreen is thriving. In the southern range of its habitat, spotted wintergreen is doing fine. In its northern range, it is listed as endangered in Canada, Illinois, and Maine. There are other things like kudzu vine and Chinese um, hyacinth. These vines grow over plants, blocking out the sun, and oftentimes kill the plants. Sometimes it's cheap, uh, trees like the Chinese mimosa tree, tallow tree, or Japanese maple. That they are beautiful, they produce a multitude of seeds that can quickly overtake your yard, out competing native trees, and even in forests as well. There are numerous websites and local nurseries that can help you identify which native plants are great for your yard and also help you to identify some of the worst invasive plants. Another idea is to provide animal habitats. They don't just need food, but they need places to live and nest. Sometimes it can be as simple as a pile of leaves. Leaves are a home to a multitude of creatures, from worms and larvae to beetles to millipedes and centipedes, various species of lizard and snakes as well. Leaf litter is also the basis of new soil formation, which will decrease the amount of mulch and fertilizer that you need to buy. Leaf litter is also broken down by fungi, which brings another issue to light. Oftentimes when it's the big, the cute, and the cuddly that are endangered, we are quick to reach out to try to save them. But oftentimes it is the small, the gross, and the weird that need help. Fungi certainly fit this bill. They also provide food for a whole host of other organisms, like this beetle and its larva as well. My children and I have been building uh, bug houses lately. Uh, these are the snowman style bug houses that we have, where we have drilled holes into the wood. Those holes are nesting sites for bees and wasps that are solitary and that don't form hives. This palatial bug mansion here is not just for bugs, but a wide variety of creatures. Uh, the basement level is dirt that's kept cool and moist for toads. Uh, the ground level has sticks for lizards and snakes. Pine cones attract beetle larvae and grubs. The bamboo provide nesting sites for bees, wasps, and ants. The flower pot attracts slugs, and all of the bricks with holes in them provide habitats for slugs, bees, um, all kinds of insects. Sometimes it is a hollowed out log that can provide a shelter for birds during storms. 
Uh, birdhouses and thickets provide places for birds to build nests. Bat boxes are another example in a species that has uh, faced drastic decreases in numbers recently. Bats are important because they feed on a bunch of insects that we consider pests. It could be a flower pot turned over on its side that provides habitat for slugs and toads. PVC pipe put in your yard can provide a habitat for tree frogs. <laughs> there are other ways to make your yard more environmentally friendly. Try not to use insecticides or cut them out altogether in your yard, as these insecticides kill all kinds of other beneficial insects, not just pests. If you are going to use insecticide, try to use one that is specific to the type of pest you are trying to eradicate. Instead of using herbicides, pull weeds up by hand, as those herbicides end up affecting other plant species. If you own a cat, keep your cat indoors, as they are natural predators. It's estimated that cats that are outdoors kill anywhere from hundreds of millions to billions of small animals every year. From birds and snakes and lizards, to squirrels, mice, voles, and moles. These are ideas that parents, you can do with your children in your yard. Older students, you can do them with your siblings. And hopefully we can teach the next generation to be a little more friendly to nature. And perhaps learn to share our earth with all the other species that have just as much right to be here as we do. Again, the think globally but act locally idea. And it doesn't get more local than your own backyard.